Now, some of people come into your life and they bring that little bit of magic to your existence. Lucas Myers, for me, is one of those people. With his more than original brand of humor and his ability to deliver the human spirit in his one-man shows, Lucas touches all he reaches in places within themselves that inspire hope and happiness. And it is with admiration and great pleasure that I introduce to you, Lucas Myers. <laughs> Oh, we're doing this now. <laughs> is that the lesbian handshake? Oh, that is. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Oh, but there's a chest bump. Oh, there's a chest bump. Yeah. <laughs> you know what to do. <laughs> what a pleasure to have you on the show. What a pleasure to be on the show. <laughs> When I, when I originally talked to Lucas and I was like, can you please be on my first show? You were alumni with IMTV. It would mean the world to me. Can you come on? And he was like, sent me this la rambling email about how busy he was and that he would come on, but only if he was allowed to stare into the lights. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here. I assured him, though, if he did do that, see, it would be the funniest stare anybody had ever seen. So I like sit the, back, relax, 15 minutes of this. I like the... I like the human spirit thing. I think that's oh, my. Yeah. I think that's my wrestler name. Oh, nice! Yeah. <laughs> Lucas the Human Spirit Myers. <laughs> <laughs> it's true what I say about you, though. Like I've, we've been together a long time. Like well, you 15 know what? Years or something. You know How what? long have we and, known each other? Uh, well, this is the this is the thing. Yeah. Jenna is responsible for my life. What? Yeah. No, seriously. No, seriously. I came to. I mean, I grew up in Nelson. I came back to Nelson. I had a one-person show. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll do it in Nelson. So I wandered into Charlotte's, and uh, there was these crazy people in there. And I said, hey, um, I, I have the show. Can I, can I do it here? And they're like, yeah, sure. And I was like, how much would it cost? And they're like, no, oh, you keep the door, and we'll just make beer sales. And I was like, well, there's no risk. So I booked a week. <laughs> right? True story. It was a risk for us. So Wednesday night, Wednesday night, there was uh, six people, I think. Mm -hmm. And then by the time the weekend rolled around, yeah. word got out, and we had decent houses. And my, uh, Krista, my now wife, uh, came to the Saturday show, and she brought her parents to the Sunday show, uh, the mother of my two children, and uh, that was, that's kind of, that's the history there. Yeah. And her story, our story. It's a beautiful uh, story. Was there, and it was all your fault, so. <laughs> I make families. <laughs> Well, that's a real honor for you to say that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you start when you start. I mean, I knew every word to every show you ever did. I, of course, was front and center for them. The Charlottes was this little cultural hall that uh, only lasted a short amount of time here in Nelson, but but it mattered. It mattered. It um, was a yeah. I have an another. Can I tell another? Yeah. Okay. Story. Okay. So my only experience doing um, open mic night was at Charlottes. Oh. And I, I mean, okay. the thing with me and music is I, I only play music in my shows. So I don't play it as a normal person. So to go up and play music as a normal person, I was freaking <laughs> terrified, right? And there's a, a song in one of my shows called East that Jenna was particularly fond of um, <laughs> called Fuck That Guy. <laughs> and it's, a, it's, a, like it's this, this kind of redneck character, right? And but then I, I caught up. And I sang one song. It was very awkward. And I said, and now I'd like to dedicate a song to Jenna. <laughs> and I started playing the song. And all I could think of was like, Everyone's just thinking this is about Jenna. <laughs> and it was just... One of my favorite pastimes. Yeah, yeah. No. Not anymore. No, obviously not. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not a true story. Not a true story. <laughs> well, I'm really excited for this new show. Oh, the new show. What's oh, yeah. it called? Uh, the new show is called Campground. Campground. A murder mystery in the woods. In the woods. With music. Is that the whole title? That's the whole title. <laughs> You've gone from East yeah. and Deck now yeah. to, say it again. Uh, um, a campground, a murder mystery in the woods with, with music. music. <laughs> and is that, so that pretty much sums it up? That's it. You don't have to come see the show. Oh, okay, like, we're good. We're done. good. Yeah. And coming to see your shows is a treat. Uh, of course we're all coming to your show. So can you give us, yes. <laughs> This is the kind of talent, that, you know, that Lucas in the Kootenays that puts us like uh, the upper echelon. We have so, you know, yeah, we'll this see. kind of we'll talent see. is, is, is world I'm just stage, writing it now. right? It's... I'm just writing it now, so we'll see. <laughs> like literally right now. But it is right comparable. Now. I think people would agree with me that your talent, uh, you know, matches up to anybody on the world stage. Okay, yeah. I'll take it. Take sure. It. Take it. <laughs> agree with yeah, me. Yeah, totally. Let's hear it. Yes. <laughs> 
Thank you. I'm just a little pig. I'm just a little piggy. I'm just doing my thing, <laughs> rooting around in the mud. Wonderful. Well, tell us what it is. What is it about? Uh, what does it do besides the title? There must be more to it. Camp I think there's some multimedia. There's some uh, multimedia stuff. Uh, yeah, my, my process of writing a show is like, what's the, what's the most difficult thing I could possibly try and do? Oh, I'll do that. Um, so this, this show has um, some projection in it. Uh, it's basically the story of a young guy who disappears. It's kind of my version. Well, because people think murder mystery, you know, all the modern murder mysteries are these kind of super intense, like the, the girl who poked the hornet's butt or whatever, you know that. <laughs> and they're so intense, right? They're like torture porn parts of them, right? Like it's like, and then he cut off her hand and sewed it into her vagina or whatever. And it's just like, <laughs> and I'm, a, I'm kind of a happy-go-lucky guy. So when I called it a murder mystery, I was like, ah, oh, shit, now I got to cut up somebody's hand and sew it in their vagina, but <laughs> I don't do that. That doesn't happen in the show. Anymore. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, so it's kind of like my version of a murder mystery, which means there's actually no dead body. It's that, like, it's that mellow. Uh, so this kid's just gone missing, and uh, they're all, they're, they're looking, the, the cops are looking for him, and there's uh, like four or five characters uh, at this campground, and they've all somehow kind of intersected uh, ah. with this kid. They've all had some kind of interaction with him uh, and they, none of them want to talk about it, right? So the first half of the play is all kind of set up, right? And this kid, he's, he's um, posting videos online and they're all kind of weird, like ambient things and they're like, what are they called, vlogs? Yes. That sounds like sure. something, something out of that sounds cool. Star Trek or something. Yeah. <laughs> Captain, the vlogs are coming at Warp Speed 5. A video 5. blog. A video blog, that's yeah. right. <laughs> so he's posting these things and there's information in them but they're kind of, you're not quite sure what's going on. And uh, so we get that on stage. We get the detective talking about it. Uh, we get the crazy hippie guy that lives in the campground, with, plays the didgeridoo, shows up. And so we get, we get introduced to all the characters. And the second half is all the detective interviewing uh, the, the, the suspects, as it ah. were. And then, <laughs> this is, I, just, I, I just sneak music into my shows. Uh, they're doing a talent show at the campground. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sure. Doesn't that always happen at a campground? Um, so what they do is they, they have the interview and then they, have the, they play the song that they're going to do at the thing. And that, that's kind of how the second half works. And uh, there's also, of course, I mean, of course, there's a shadow puppet thing because, I mean, <laughs> yes! come on, you've got to have something like a shadow so puppet important. thing. So important. So yeah, it's, it's kind of, there's a, it's, a, it's a lot and uh, I hope I pull it off. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there front and center mm -hmm. on the Saturday. What's your process? I want to know like, how you come up with all these magical tidbits. There's been how many over the last 15 years in terms uh, of plays have you made? I don't know. Like six, or, like six or seven. Yeah. And then there's the Cromali brothers. The Cromali brothers and they're yes. just kind of this ongoing right. thing. Well, what I do is I, I get um, clothespins and I put them on my ears. Right here, and then I write, ah, and then I take them off and I put them on my nipples, and then I like, ah, right. And if it's still not working, yeah, I go, I go down low. No, I, I, I like to. I mean, I like to create. I like to create shows that are accessible, like Deck. Mm -hmm. It's about DIY stuff. Hello Baby is about having a baby. Uh, I, like to, I like to create shows where the audience can come and go, oh, okay, that, either that's me or I know someone that's gone through that experience because I think that's important yeah. that people are, are connecting to it. Like I'm not going to do like a six-hour version of Miss Julie as a leper or something. You know what I mean? Like, which Anymore. Not anymore. I mean, that could be totally awesome, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something that's, it's, I, I don't know if it's accessible, but it's just something that, that I'm interested in. I think I would be interested in seeing. You so, do it so well. well you I really, went, really do. I went to it. I went uh, camping. Yeah. With, with this show, I went camping yeah. with, uh, with, my, with my family, and I was like, this is like a little world, right? And it's also, everyone's gone camping, so the, they have associations with it, so there's lots of uh, opportunity for humor mm -hmm. in that. And, uh, and I thought, yeah, there's this little world uh, here. And then I'm like, well, how can I make it interesting? So then the missing persons thing came up. And then I was talking to a friend of mine who is down in Vancouver, and uh, he runs a theater, and he's all about you know, getting the audience in. So he's like, what's it called? And I was going with the one word thing, like deck or east, and I said, camp. That's initially what it was called. And, <laughs> and he's like, unless you have transvestites in it, you can't call it camp. Because, <laughs> and I was kind of ba banking on people going, oh, maybe there's transvestites, and showing up, and I'm like, ha ha, I got you in the door. Now you have to watch the show. Um, <laughs> 
But he's like, it's not fair. That's not, I'm like, okay, fine. I'll call it Campground. He's like, eh, still not sure. So I was like, okay, fine, asshole. It's called Campground, a murder mystery musical in the woods. But it's not a musical. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. So, but that's, that's kind of, and I'm like, oh, now I have the murder mystery kind of framework. That's where the detective came from. That's where the murder mystery, even though it's not a murder mystery, came from. And, uh, and then I kind of went from there. Mm -hmm. And I just picked stuff I'm interested in, like... Mm. This has some political stuff in it. It has some uh, sexual politics stuff in it, and Good. it's just and it's like uh, and, and people taking risks. And I, I just try to think of what I am interested in or, or what kind of message I want to I want to put out there into the world, and I just <laughs> work it in. You do a great job of that with I think music. All the test. <laughs> with music. <laughs> Are you going to give us a little sneak peek tonight? I hear. Mm, I think I am. All right. Mm, I think I am. Um, what Bring out doing? the guitar! Bring out the guitar! Uh, I should also mention, as the guitar is being brought out, there is a, there's an on, kind of an online element to the show. Uh, two of the characters in the show um, are actually have online profiles uh, on Facebook. Um, there's a guy named uh, Justin Case. He's the kind of hipster, uh, the hipster character in the show. And then there's Michael... Hodgkins, who's uh, the kind of redneck guy that you're going to meet tonight. And, um, and so you can actually go on Facebook and you can, you can check out their profiles. And basically the idea is I wanted, uh, I wanted to include this because the detective on stage live at the show is going to go online. And he's going to go on their Facebook things. And it's this, I mean, it's kind of a cautionary tale, right? Just make sure your privacy settings are good. or. or <laughs> A detective might find your Facebook profile and, you know, go after you for something. But you can go on and, and you, can, you can actually uh, check out their posts from, I think it's August 28th to September 2nd. And they talk about going camping. And they talk about things that actually happen in the show. So feel free to, uh, to go online, Justin Case and uh, Michael Hodgkins, who I will uh, let, allow uh, him, himself to introduce himself to you. Mike, and uh, I'm going to sing you a little tune here. Wow, I'm really close to you guys. How's it going? <laughs> uh, I'm going to sing you a little tune here. Uh, I'm not going to talk into that yet because that sounds like I'm coming from another planet. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I had this experience uh, at the campground. I can't talk about the show because uh, I've signed like one of those confidentiality things. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, everybody in the show is a woman, uh, and um, we're also all dead, and uh, we're in kind of a um, nightmare version of the internet, uh, and I am Kaiser Sozek, so... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but basically, um, is that me? Oh, they turned me off. Oh, am I still on? They turned me off and on. They turned me off and on. I'm getting turned on. You spin me right round, baby, right round. Um, <laughs> so I kind of had this awakening. I work for the oil and gas industry. I'm from Medicine Hat. And, um, and yeah, I picked up this kid hitchhiking. And I told him, you know, we were chatting. And I told him what I work. And he just went after me, right? Like, he just kind of was like, oh, you're ruining the earth and everything. And, and I'm like, buddy, if it wasn't me, it'd be somebody else. And he's like, that's a shitty argument, right? Because, no, really, because, like, oh, so, like, oh, so you're killing babies, right? And it's like, well, if I'm not killing the babies, somebody else will. It's like, no, stop killing the babies, right? Like, it's, like, stupid. So I, I got a bit pissed off. I have a bit of a temper. Uh, so I kicked him out of my truck. Um, but I, was, I wasn't going very fast. So, <laughs> so it was okay. But he kind of got me thinking, his conviction, right? And I was like, you know, he's kind of right. So I wrote this song. Uh, it's called uh, Blackthorn Lake. That's the name of the campground, eh? Uh, Blackthorn Lake, an oil man's lament, and um, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to dedicate it to Stephen Harper. And, um, and this, by the way, this is an actual, like a Calgary, you know, one of those Calgary white, um, old stock Canadian hats, right? <laughs> there we go. Swim 
That's right. October 2nd and 3rd, that's at the Capitol Theater. You can get tickets for that now online.